this video, we'll take a look at configuring the Netscaler web logging feature. Let's begin. First, we'll ensure that the Netscaler web logging feature is enabled. To do that, we'll drill under the Settings menu to Advanced Features and verify that, in fact, web logging has been enabled. I'll click the OK button to dismiss that, and we'll continue. Next, under Settings, we'll look at the Global System Settings to examine some of the other web logging features, or parameters, rather. So we'll scroll down here to the web logging section. And we see that there's a buffer size of 16 meg. And if we wish, we could also include a custom HTTP request and response as part of this. Click the OK button and I'll proceed to dismiss that. Or close rather. So at this point, we'll go ahead and save the configuration and proceed. Next, we'll want to use the Netscaler web logging client to begin tracking as the activity needs to be delivered. To launch the Netscaler web logging client, I'm going to use an elevated command prompt with administrative permission. And here, I'm going to navigate to the folder in which the Netscaler web logging client is. Here, I have previously downloaded the client, or rather DIR, and the client is in the bin directory, so DIR in the bin, and there's the executable. So if I navigate to the bin directory and use the command with a slash question mark, it gives me the list of the command line switches that I can use. Things like specifying a file name to draw from a debug, or if I want to display out. The configuration file is located in the Etsy directory. And if I were to use Notepad, this shows me the configuration file for NSWL. The configuration file can hold filters so that I can be a little bit more discerning as to what I track, along with parameters around the log file format, which here is defaulted to the W3C format, which is common for web-based traffic. Log hourly, cap the log file size, and a format for naming the log files as they are created. Down below, I can specify other parameters, including toward the bottom there, the parameters for logging onto and tapping into an ADC appliance. To begin the configuration process, I'm going to use the, let me navigate back to the bin directory, and I'll use the command line utility, NSWL, and we're going to use the dash add NS to add an appliance and specify that the configuration file is located in the Etsy directory. And that's where to put the credentials. Here I'll specify the NSIP and the username and password. Now, the password is hashed and encoded in the file. So if I were to more the log cont file, and go all the way to the bottom. You see that even though the username isn't clear, the password is certainly anything but. All right. Next, we'll want to start the, the capture, if you will, or start the web logging activity. So from here in the bin directory, I'll again invoke the client with the start command and point to my configuration file. Now that the Netscaler web logging is taking place, let's go ahead and generate some traffic. All 
All right. I'm going to use the open and all tabs option here to hit a whole bunch of different pages on my ADC appliance. Having done that, I'll now navigate back here and press control C to stop the capture process. To view the WC3 entries, W3C entries, I'll navigate to the logs directory, or sorry, the LS, oh, DIR rather, the CD Etsy DIR. And there it is, it's in the bin directory because I did not specify a different path for it. I'll use Notepad again to open up that EX190429. That's year, month, date. And lo and behold, the entries there. I can see the traffic having been sent from my machine toward a particular server. I can see the nature of the GET request, the status code coming back, the size, what version of HTTP, user agent string, and whether there is a cookie or a refer attached to it. In this demonstration, we've shown how to configure the Netscaler web logging client and tap into these log files as the traffic goes through. Thanks for watching.